All right, I'm just out here in the garage here and I'm getting some uh, materials together to start making some Spike Series jaw harps again. And uh, what I've got here are some blanks from some flat wire material that, believe it or not, came from this old laundry hamper. So what it is, is I cut this open. There we go. And you see that there's this metal wire in the laundry hamper. So what I've been doing, if I remove it, I cut out these bend parts, but this is very, very, very springy stuff. And this ends up being the reed material for my spike series. And yeah, I just uh, get some flat sections in here, you know, cut a piece of it off, get rid of it. As long as it's straight enough, then that's about the size that I want. There it is. Recycled laundry hamper, boxcar spike series. Okay, we are going in for another experiment. I wanted to start making some more of my spike series harps, um, but the frame is made out of 530 seconds key stock, which is, I think, the perfect size for the size of the harp and the reed material that I'm using, which is just these little bits of springy flat wire from an old laundry hamper. And what I have, because for some reason the 530 seconds uh, key stock has been tough to find, is one eighth key stock. So you can see it is slightly thinner. It's gonna be maybe a flimsier frame. These are not too bad for what they are. They're actually, you know, they don't, they don't compress on you too much while you're trying to play. So there's not a lot of give to them. So kind of hoping for the same thing with these, but uh, we'll see how it works out with these, these reeds. Um, this may end up being the new Spike series, uh, if this is too hard to get, uh, or this may end up being a new smaller version, which I think I'm gonna call the Spark. Here we go. Okay, so I've got four lengths of 1 8 key stock. I took all the galvanizing coating off, so they've all been cleaned up, and they are ready for their initial bends. Here are the reeds. So this style of harp was, well, so far all mine have been pretty much just kind of hand bending around certain things like sockets and stuff. So I'm going to start off with this where I've uh, been bending the arms uh, to a certain angle. And then I just basically wrap the middle of it around some something I stick in the vise, like, like I said, the size of a socket or something like that. And, uh, you know, wrap it around and hope for the best. So here we go. All right, so this is about as far as I can get with the two bender here. Uh, I can get a good chunk of the frames started fairly consistently, nice and straight. So it's a good start. The rest will just be by hand in the vise, pair of pliers. We'll go from there. All right, we're trying out a new method here. This 1 8 key stock, it's very thin, small. Fairly easy to bend. Half inch socket. Let's see what we can do. Not bad so far. I think I'm going to want to do a little bit, do the rest of it probably with some pliers, get it a little more even in there. Yeah, not bad. Fix that up a bit. <clears throat> Maybe we'll do the rest.
Oops. There we go, quick and dirty. All right, my first crimp attempt with this size of key stock was a miserable failure. Um, I don't know if I made the uh, the relief cuts a little bit too wide, but what ended up happening was it just kind of smashed down straight and it didn't fold over into the, into the channel like I was hoping. So I'm gonna do something a little different and just put a chisel right into the, into the cut, try to get it started to spread into the middle and then we'll see what happens. Okay, I got a successful crimp. Uh, somehow I managed to get the frame arms messed up like that, but I think I might try to grind that down and make it look nicer after. A little bit of clanking, but when I put it in here and I twang it, it was pretty clean. So I'm going to do the, tri uh, the trigger bend and then I will try the other two. I was tempted to crimp all of them first, but uh, considering my last one up here was a failure, I am just going to carry on with this one and see if I can get one to sound good first. Okay, it was bothering me too much and I ended up, the grinder was not a good idea. I was too worried about catching the reed. So I did that by hand with my file. The left side I actually went a little fur. All right, I am done with this batch of spikes. And aside from this failure here, which uh, I just, the crimp channel was just way too uh, too wide. I couldn't get it to crimp on the reed. So the reed's still good. It's been sharpened and we will save it for another day. But the reject shall go with the rejects. And the other three survived. So this was the first one. Um, had a bit of trouble with it. I decided not to do any more of the heat coloring because I messed this one up. I think it looks terrible, but it also caused, um, probably because of the, the very thin stock of the frame, uh, it uh, caused a bunch of deforming and I had to readjust it and all that stuff. So um, I decided not to do that with the other two. Um, remarkably, I narrowed the reed a little bit, or the trigger on my grinder, and I came up with this note. Remarkably, this one, with a much shorter trigger is almost the same note. And this third one that I just finished today, which again, high trigger, little different shape, is almost the same note. Let's get an ear on these. Yeah, that's a pretty good view of my workbench. Okay, so let's lay these in order here. This is the first one. This is, uh, this will be the prototype, I suppose. I'll keep this one for myself. They're all a little clanky still. I had, the, I can only get the gaps so close before they get really clanky. But each one has kind of a little position you gotta find. They're, they're not beginner harps, but once you get, you know, get uh, accurate with it, they do sound pretty good. <laughs> Now, short trigger. And the third one, the longer trigger, not touched. Again, this was just a short trigger, not shaved down at all. This is just as it finished. 
How's that for consistency? <laughs>